Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A San Antonio man shot in the head and a suspect is on the run. Just ahead, how police say the suspect got away. President Biden and Israeli leaders now set for a critical face-to-face -face meeting as tensions flare across the Middle East following a deadly hospital blast in Gaza. I'm ABC's Justin Finch following the latest from Washington. And trending right now on KSET.com this morning, thousands of buildings are identified as vacant or dangerous throughout San Antonio. KSET Investigates recently showed you just how big a problem vacant structure fires are becoming throughout our city. You can see just how many dangerous structures there are and where they are located online right now. And outside with live cam, still cool, but not quite as chilly. The humidity is making a comeback. We'll get a look at your forecast in just a moment. But first, it may have seemed like a nightmare to one local family. They woke up to a car inside their home. This happened in a neighborhood not far from I-10 in West Hausman on a street called Baldwin Ridge. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, was anyone seriously hurt? Well, thankfully, the family who lives here, uh, everyone is safe, but very shaken up. I had a chance to talk to the man who lives here just a few minutes ago, and he told me an incredible story about what happened to them this morning. But look at the house right here. It is pretty much in shambles. Uh, the car drove right in through the front of the house and ended up right up against their staircase. Now, the man who I talked to said that he and his family, his wife and children, they all woke up, didn't know what was going on. The house was filled with smoke. He went to take his children down the stairs only to realize that there was a car at the bottom of the stairs. They actually had to have the fire department come in and take them out through the window, but thankfully no one was injured. This happened just before four o'clock this morning. Uh, he was just gathering some things a few minutes ago and leaving to go to a relative's house. As far as the driver goes, we don't know if there were injuries, but according to what the police told us, there was some damage to the inside of the car. So it looks like the driver may have been hurt and possibly the car may have been stolen. That's what the police told us. The driver took off uh, and so they are still looking for the person who caused all this damage and of course caused uh, such a panic for the family who lives here. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, once again, you do have to grab a jacket before you head out the door this morning, and temperatures are definitely on the chilly side. We've got readings right now that are in the 50s, even a couple of 40s, not quite as cool as yesterday. As you can see right now, we are at 51. That bottom number is still very low, dew point of 44, so it's really comfortable out there. It is going to be another sensational sunrise. We're going to be up to 83 today, so yesterday was upper 70s. Today, we're back to a normal high temperature just not exactly what you would expect at this time of year. And then as far as the aquifer is concerned, yesterday's reading did drop down another four tenths of a foot and the allergen. Don't know if you got a little scratchy throat or sniffles or anything like that, but ragweed is moderate. Mold, pigweed and fall elm are all on the low side. So take a look at some of the temperatures around the area as of right now. And again, it is definitely chilly. It is definitely jacket weather. We will be seeing temperatures drop a couple of more degrees because we still have clear sky dry air, light wind out there. 46 burning stage, 42 right now in comfort. And we are at 51 uh, officially out there at the airport. The normal low is 60, so we're averaging 10 degrees or even more than that below normal. Again, dew points are very low. They have started to edge up ever so slightly, but still, I mean, that's kind of split in hairs. Also, you look upstairs in the atmosphere, we still have very dry air, but notice how we're starting to get this little bit of a shade of gray coming on in here. So maybe not quite as just, you know, the intense blue skies we've had the past couple of days, maybe not quite as intensely blue, but still another fantastic day today. Again, we do have some of those allergens out there. So clear, chilly this morning, and then later on this afternoon, right around low 80s, the humidity again begins its return overnight, but that's going to get erased as the front moves on through. However, front in name only because behind it, we are definitely going to be heating up. We will get rid of some of the humidity and we're going to be uh, near record high temperatures going into this weekend. Yep, it's going to be back up into the low 90s. Do have some rain chances though way down the road. Details on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, good morning, sir. Anything going on on the roads? Not a whole lot, Mike. Thankfully, our morning's off to a pretty quiet start as we get a look there at 35 southbound at Maine. The upper and lower levels look pretty quiet. Not a lot of traffic uh, travels through there this early in the morning. That's pretty much the case anywhere in 
in and around the Alamo City at this time, but we can expect the roads to get a little bit busier as the morning commute does get moving. Just be on the lookout. Although we are seeing some quiet roadways, we still have a lot of that overnight construction, some of which is still trying to wrap up here. Let's just go ahead and take you into I-35 southbound. I talked to our friends at Transguide about this spot a little bit earlier. It does look like crews are still out there, so again, just watch out because there is a little bit of a slowdown taking place. This work should be wrapping up, but we can expect the overnight work to continue throughout the week, so just plan your commute ahead of time. Now, let's take a look at some of those travel times. If you're heading into the Alamo City, the journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should still be about 23 minutes. Uh, and right now, no need to hurry if you're coming in from Bolverde along 281 southbound. We have a 25-minute commute. And if you are heading in from New Braunfels along I-35 southbound, it still should be about 26 minutes. So that road work that's out there is not necessarily slowing folks down from New Braunfels, but it is slowing folks down along the uh, 1604 interchange there. But we'll get one last look back here in town at 35 southbound at Maine. Again, off to a quiet start here in the traffic department, but I'll keep a close eye on things and give you more updates throughout the morning. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say a man was shot overnight while he was sitting in front of his apartment. It happened just after 1 a.m. in the 100 block of Deschantel Road on the northwest side near Fredericksburg Road. Police say the man was on the patio area in front of the apartment when someone driving a dark colored sedan pulled up and started shooting. Police say the man was hit in the head and taken to the hospital in critical condition. The driver of the car got away and was last seen heading toward Fredericksburg Road. Now to the war in Israel and Gaza. President Biden is set for high stakes meetings with Israel Prime Minister today. He arrived there just a couple of hours ago, but his talks with Arab leaders are now called off. The cancellation comes after the Gaza Health Ministry reports at least 500 Palestinian civilians were killed when a rocket struck a hospital. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, President Joe Biden says the explosion at the hospital appears to not have been caused by Israel. Tensions intensifying this morning across the Middle East. <laughs> From the West Bank to Jordan to Iran, angry protests prompted by reports of a deadly missile strike at a Gaza City hospital killing hundreds. Many of the dead were injured Palestinian civilians, others seeking shelter from the fighting. Videos circulating online showing that hospital reduced to a burning shell. Hamas militants blaming the blast on an Israeli missile, Israel insisting they are not at fault. The explosion happening just as President Biden was heading to the Middle East. Biden saying in a statement, I am outraged and deeply saddened by the explosion at the Al-Ali Arab Hospital in Gaza and the terrible loss of life that resulted. The president saying the U.S. supports the protection of civilian life during conflict and that he's directing his team to investigate. A U.S. official tells ABC News it is uncertain who launched the strike and it will take a while to determine. ABC News has learned the Biden administration is drafting a $100 billion foreign aid package that includes security assistance for Israel. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here in Texas this morning, a search underway for a man who reportedly escaped from a Harris County courtroom after having his bond revoked. 32-year-old Michael Devon Combs, who was facing an assault charge, was last seen fleeing from the 176th court located in downtown Houston. Deputies said they placed shackles on Combs while he was in court, but when a brawl happened inside a courtroom next door and authorities left to go assist, Harris County officials say Combs was able to get out of his shackles, remove his ankle monitor, and leave the building. Anyone with information about his whereabouts are being asked to call 911 or Houston Crime Stoppers. Special prosecutors are seeking to recharge actor Alec Baldwin in the fatal shooting of a cinematographer on the set of a Western movie in 2021. New Mexico-based prosecutors say they'll present their case to the grand jury within the next two months. They say additional facts have come to light in the shooting on the set of the film Rust that killed Helena Hutchins. Baldwin has said he pulled back the hammer and not the trigger and the gun fired. Attorneys for Baldwin say this latest move by the prosecutors I'm misguided. In the span of two weeks, the San Antonio Spurs and Houston Rockets will have played each other three times between the preseason and the regular season. We saw the first of the three matchups go down Monday, but despite it being a meaningless preseason game, there was no love lost between the two franchises. I think there already is a rivalry. Yeah. Um, 
uh, I think we want to win every game we play against them. We want to, you know, beat them. So I think it definitely will be. And I know they have a bunch of players who, you know, want to get under under people's skin and you know want to play hard too. So um, I feel like you know there will be some heads that will clash sometimes. <laughs> but you know it is what it is. That's the game. The Southwest Division rivals tip off tonight at 7 inside Frostbank Center. That's before the two meet up for an early regular season tilt on October 27th, also here in San Antonio. Texas Rangers host the Houston Astros in Game 3 of the ALCS tonight at 7.03 p.m. Rangers up 2-0. The pitching matchup, Max Scherzer will make his long away to return to the mound for Texas and Christian Javier will start for the Strohs. Meanwhile, the Phillies are up 2-0 in their NLCS against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the time now is 510 and 52 degrees for now. Coming up next, a major development and extortion case against a prime suspect in the disappearance case of Natalie Holloway. Outside with live cam, lighter jacket morning, 52 degrees as we take a live look at San Antonio International Airport. We are just getting started here on Good Morning San Antonio. And welcome back. It's 514. You're on Vandersloot. The suspect in the Natalie Holloway disappearance case is expected to plead guilty in an extortion case. ABC's Ariel Reshef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a major development in the extortion case against Joran Vandersloot, the prime suspect in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway. The Dutch national serving a 28-year sentence in Peru for the murder of another woman, but was brought to the U.S. a few months ago to face these charges. Natalie Holloway vanished during a high school graduation trip in Aruba in 2005. Beth Holloway's attorney saying Vandersloat is expected to change his plea to guilty, offering up clues about what happened. The FBI was uh, charged with determining whether he was being truthful or not. They used what means they had available to him to corroborate or test the veracity of what he was saying. And we'll have much more coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. 515, 52 degrees. Let's look out there with TransGuy looking over at I-10 at Culeva Road. Things are quiet, but they're moving at this hour. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos to see how the roads are doing very soon. Wayfair's big sale is coming back. Get bedroom furniture up to 60% off. Area rugs up to 80% off. Kitchen and dining furniture up to 60% off. And free shipping on everything. Save big this Way Day, October 25th and 26th. Wayfair, you've got just what I need. Bye bye, cough. Later, chest congestion. Hello, 12 hours of relief. 12 hours? Not coughing? Hashtag still not coughing? Mucin XDM gives you 12 hours of relief from chest congestion in any type of cough, day or night. Mucin XDM. Ah! It's comeback season. I got that eternal energy. Uh, you don't know what's standing in front of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just about 519. Welcome back. Welcome back. Nice weather so far, but how are the roads are looking? <laughs> roads are looking great. They're right behind us, too. Oh, you can get a look oh, there. Pretty That's pretty good. neat. Uh, but we have a wider view for our viewers. So when we get a look here at TransGuide, things have been off to a pretty good start in my department as we take a look here. And there you go. We're taking that animation so we can show you what's happening out there, out on the roadways. Beautiful shot here, 37 at the Alamo Dome. It's one of our favorites here in the studio. But out there on the roads, things are looking pretty favorable for you as well. As the morning commute does get moving, be on the lookout. We did have a little bit of road work that is wrapped up along I-35 southbound right there near Topper Wine. We take you in and there's still a little bit of congestion, but keep this in mind. That should be wrapping up pretty soon and hopefully crews out there aren't experiencing any major delays. So just be on the lookout there. Now I want to take a drive over here and we have to talk about 1604 at least once or twice a week. We have segment three that will see a full closure of the loop 1604 westbound main lanes. Now keep this in mind too. 1604 is a pretty big area where a lot of people travel through. So if you are traveling overnight, here's what you can expect. That full closure is current and should take us all the way up to Saturday, October 21st. The work begins at nine at night and finishes at five in the morning. 
And during that time, as you just saw, Loop 1604 westbound main lanes will be fully closed. That's from the Blanco Road exit ramp to the Blanco Road entrance ramp. And if you're in the area, just make sure to follow those detours. You can also scan this QR code that takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. There is a full list of all the closures that are happening right now in and around our area. Uh, but Mike, one thing I keep on thinking about is these tech stock crews getting a little bit of break when it comes to the weather. Yeah, yeah. Now it is going to be hotter the next couple of days, uh, not today, but uh, as we go into tomorrow, as well as Friday, although the humidity is going to be tolerable. But yeah, we're, we're looking at some more 90s. First things first, let's just enjoy what we have. And these folks were enjoying the beautiful sunset yesterday. Friends at home, yes indeed. And it was absolutely gorgeous. And the sunrise this morning is going to be spectacular again. And like the past couple of days, make sure you have sunglasses because it is just going to be just intensely beautiful out there. Nice view out by the airport right now. 51 degrees at the airport, 48 in Kerrville, 46 Rio Medina, as well as Hondo, and temperatures maybe up a degree or two compared to this time yesterday. We did dip down to 47 degrees, but we're still 10 below normal, and yeah, nice and chilly out there, and the humidity is still very, very low. Again, anytime you're below 60, that's that th sort of threshold number for dew point temperatures, and that's when it's comfortable out there, but these numbers have come up just a little bit compared to yesterday. Uh, three, five, almost 10, 11 degrees getting compared to that, and that's going to continue to be the trend. Now, it's still going to be comfortable today. We're not going to have anything oppressive as far as humidity is concerned, but overnight then, humidity really starts to come up into tomorrow morning, but then watch what happens. That gets all pushed on out of here, and that's the front that's going to be moving on through. But it's only a cold front in name. Yes, it does pull in the drier air, but in behind it then, we're not going to get really northerly winds southwest, and that's going to help to warm things up quite a bit. And we are going to warm up very quickly once again, working all the way through the 50s and 60s throughout the morning, getting up to 73 at noon. Top off at 83 later on today. Normal high temperature up about five, six degrees compared to the past couple of afternoons. Nothing shows up on the satellite picture right now and really not much around the country. I mean, we've got that big low up there that's moving into the Great Lakes. That's the one that's going to sort of help to pull that uh, that front on through. But we have to look down and this is looking way ahead into next week, but it is the uh, tropical system Norma down there in the eastern Pacific. What this is going to do is work its way up to the north and then a lot of this moisture is going to get thrown up in our direction. So that's going to give us the rain chance coming in here, but not until next week. A couple of extra clouds by Sunday, Monday as well. Maybe a shower to some moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, but then here comes that moisture from the Pacific coming across Mexico and that's going to give us some rain chance Tuesday and that's going to extend into Wednesday, maybe even Thursday as well. So I don't take a drop breaker, but this is good, good looking rain chance, although we do have to wait a few days. Today, 83. Fantastic. Once again, get outside and enjoy it. Tomorrow morning, early humidity is around, but that gets pushed on out of here with that front. But look at that. We heat up 88, 93 Friday. And those top little numbers there are the records for each day, respectively. So Friday, good chance of hitting a record close to it. Saturday, Sunday, and then the humidity starts to return, but at least a rain chance also returns by Tuesday in the middle part of next week. Well, that will be good, but for yeah. now, we'll enjoy the beautiful weather. Yeah, fantastic. Again, grab a jacket. Thank you, Mike. By 23, 52 degrees. And today we are starting a new type of hyper local storytelling here on KSET 12. Up next, we're going to show you what Know My Neighborhood is all about. But first, your lottery numbers pick three, three, nine, nine, Fireball nine. Your daily four number seven, two, four, one, Fireball four. Cash five, seven, eight, 26, 30, 34. And your Mega Millions, 5, 6, 29, 32, 61, Mega Ball 20, Mega Flyer 4. Good luck. There's a lot of beautiful people out here that call this home. Oh, I love it. Been here forever. I'll probably die here. <laughs> our neighbors keep an eye on our houses and they make sure that we're safe. There's a lot of traffic and going all over the place. The street remains very dangerous to cross. Kind of a food desert, you know, uh, that's the other thing. There's really not a lot of uh, grocery stores. Break-ins, burglaries, a lot of gun violence too. 
Uh, it's changing for the better. There's a very strong family uh, commitment within this community. The moment that you're involved with a player, you, you get introduced to their entire family. Is one of the strength of Westwood Square the people who live here? Absolutely. Absolutely. KSAT is hitting the road for its first after neighborhood newscast tonight, starting at six. We're talking the history, the investments, what people love about this area on our west side and what they'd like to see change. We hope you can join Steve and Myra for KSAT's kickoff of the Know My Neighborhood series, where we get to know Westwood Square and the people who call it home. That's tonight, starting at six. But this morning, it's 920, uh, sorry, 528, 52 degrees. Representative Jim Jordan is hoping the second time is a charm. Up next, why his first vote to become the new House Speaker didn't go so well. Plus, can you guess the salary you now have to make to afford a typical home here in the United States? Up next, how the American dream is becoming more of a pipe dream for many people. Good news, though. You could soon be a new pet owner. We're going to visit with the Animal Defense League coming up very soon. And ahead on GMSA at 6, you got your degree. So what happens now? How you can land your first job after graduation? The battle for a new House Speaker continues in Washington. It's still not looking good for Congressman Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan has talked about defunding the, the FBI. Uh, he's talked about some things that are fairly radical to most Americans. The drama continues on the Hill. Just ahead, why some Republicans say Jordan is just a bad choice. And trending right now on KSET.com this morning, a carjacking suspect is killed and a man is injured in a two-vehicle high-speed crash in Kerrville. Kerrville police say the man suspected of stealing a car at gunpoint was killed after he, was let, after he led police on a high-speed chase. You can find out more about that investigation and read your comments on the story online right now. Outside with Live Cam, if you're just now waking up, it was cold yesterday morning, still really chilly out there, but the humidity is starting to make a bit of a comeback. We're down to 51 degrees. We'll talk to Mike and Steven in a moment, but back to our late breaking news this morning. A local family is still trying to make sense of the sights they saw as they woke up this morning. They found a car in their living room and it happened on a street called Baldwin Ridge in a neighborhood not far from I-10 and West Houseman. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the driver of that car ran away. Have police found that person yet? No, no arrest uh, that we know of. Now, the owner of this home told me that he saw a man who was behind the wheel who did not appear to be too steady on his feet. Again, that driver took off. The family who lives here was shaken up, but in a different way. Once you check out this video, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. The San Antonio firefighters actually had to rescue the family, carrying children down a ladder from the second floor. I spoke to the father of those children. He told me that they were not able to use the stairs inside their home because there was a car actually on them. The family and others in this neighborhood woke up to a loud noise. No one knew what to think until they saw the car was inside the home. A driver apparently lost control of it just before four this morning and slammed into the house, then took off. No one inside the home was hurt. The police told us they did find damage inside the car, telling them that that car may have been stolen. It's also possible the driver suffered some injuries. The family, meanwhile, will be staying with relatives until they can figure out what to do next. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. And all right, when you uh, step outside this morning, definitely grab a jacket. It's almost identical to the past couple of mornings. Nice and cool and crisp out there and a lot of clear skies, beautiful stars and all the planets out this morning. Once again, 51 degrees. We're just about 10 below normal dew point is at 44, so still really dry air when you're down in the mid 40s. Although this number, you know, Mark was alluding to how the humidity is starting to come back. This number has gone up a little bit. It's still comfortable outside. We're not going to have a humid day, but that uh, bottom number will again continue its slow increase as the day rolls on. Temperatures around the area, everybody's in the 40s and 50s. Think back to yesterday at this time, most everybody was in the 40s and even some 30s around here. So up just a couple of degrees, but again, still a great, great morning. Ragweed is moderate, mold, pigweed, fall elm, whole grocery list of different allergens out there. 73 degrees at noon. So we already gained 20 between now and noon. With this dry air, we heat up very quickly, very easily, and then top off at 83. Plenty of sunshine out there. Maybe a, a hint of a milky shade to the sky today, but again, 
that's just splitting hairs. Nothing to complain about. All right, we do have some changes coming up here, and that does include hot temperatures. Yeah, no, no way to spin that any different. It's going to be a hot weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any problems out there yet? Not yet, Mike. I've seen a stall vehicle off of 410 eastbound near I-10, but other than that, our morning commute is off to a pretty decent start. Let's get a look around town with Transguide 37 at Pecan Valley. You're seeing traffic pick up just a smidge out there and 37 at South Cross. North and southbound lanes still pretty steady with traffic, but those are those spots where we tend to see it build up a little bit later on in the day. There are closer shot at I-10 and here at West Avenue. Things again just moving along pretty easily. As we take you to our map, no major delays reported just yet, so enjoy the roads while you can. As we take a look at travel times, if you're heading into town, it's a pleasant drive from Pleasanton with 26 minutes along I-37 northbound, 28 along US-90 eastbound. Now's the time to head out the door if you're heading in from Castroville. And right now that arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes along I-35 northbound. So again, great start to our morning commute, but we'll keep a close eye on things. More road work is always expected. I'll tell you where coming up in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. A dog whose owner allowed him to attack and bite a man in the neck last month has been euthanized. Animal Care Services confirmed that the dog was humanely put down on Monday. This is just one of several dog attacks that KSET has covered in recent months. This one happened near the intersection of North Colorado and West Martin. The San Antonio Police Department says Marcus Davila, quote, intentionally allowed his large dog to attack the victim. That was back on September 21st. That victim suffered serious injuries that required multiple surgeries. Davila is facing charges in the attack and is out on bond awaiting indictment. On to other news this morning. It's now been two weeks and counting since Representative Kevin McCarthy was ousted as House Speaker and the vacancy has yet to be filled. Congressman Jim Jordan has a second vote for a speaker scheduled for this morning at 10 a.m. This comes after his first attempt to win the position failed, due mostly to a lack of full GOP support. CNN's John Lawrence explains why several key Republicans refused to rally behind Jordan. Representative Jim Jordan is hoping the second time is the charm. So we're going to keep working and we're going to get to the votes. The Republican from Ohio is seeking more support in his quest to be the next Speaker of the House. His first bid fell short Tuesday after 20 Republicans voted against him, including GOP Rep Ken Buck of Colorado. Jim Jordan has talked about defunding the, the FBI. Um, he's talked about some things that are fairly radical to most Americans, the folks in the middle who we need to win if we're going to win elections. Republican Representative Kevin McCarthy was voted out as House Speaker earlier this month, and until a successor is named, the chamber is basically in limbo, unable to consider legislation, including government funding. And the threat of another potential government shutdown is only a month away. The idea that the Republicans kind of hit rock bottom, bottom and are nominating Jim Jordan for speaker, I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, Halloween's coming early. Jordan can only afford to lose four Republican votes if all Democrats are present. And House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries says his caucus is in talks to reopen the House with, quote, traditional Republicans. There are a whole host of other Republicans who are respected on our side of the aisle. Jim Jordan is not one of them. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And the time now is 538 and 51 degrees for now. If you feel down that you may never get to own a home, you're not alone. Up next, we'll show you how the reality of home ownership is simply becoming out of reach for many Americans. And let's look out there with live cam. It's another cool morning to enjoy your jacket. 51 degrees to start off your day, but we're going to warm up a little bit this afternoon. And we'll be checking with Mike to see how long this nice weather is going to last. We'll be right back. The decorative skulls you see everywhere during Day of the Dead are called calaveras, and the most popular calaveras originated with a political cartoonist and printmaker, José Guadalupe Posada. Born in 1852, Posada lived through some of Mexico's most turbulent times, and his first political cartoons were published when he was just a teenager. They were so successful, they forced a governor out of office, but Posada's new enemies forced him to flee town. In 1888, he moved to Mexico City, and in the following years, he helped publish tens of thousands of illustrated flyers, or volantes. These single-page tabloids were like our late-night talk shows. They were filled with biting political humor, and at a time when few could read, Posada's Calaveras became popular throughout Mexico. 
So popular, many believe he raised the country's political consciousness. And when the Mexican Revolution was just beginning, Posada published what would become his most famous image, La Catrina. At the time, many of Mexico's ruling class were obsessed with acting and looking European. To mock them, Posada put a fancy French hat on the Aztec's female god of death. His statement, rich or poor, we all die. Death is the great equalizer. As far as Posada, he died poor and mostly forgotten in 1913. But in the following decades, his influence on the great artists of Mexico became undeniable. Today, many consider Posada the father of modern Mexican art, and La Catrina has become the icon of Day of the Dead. And welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. And now takes a salary of nearly $115,000 to afford the median-priced home in the U.S. That's according to Redfin. The salary is the highest needed income on record and nearly $40,000 more than the typical household earns. The typical home is priced at about $420,000. And while that's down just a bit from the all-time high in 2022, when you couple the price with current mortgage rates, it puts out of reach for the average home buyer. Meanwhile, holiday spending is likely to rebound this year. According to a report, it's not gifts that consumers will be splurging on the most in the run-up to Christmas. The 2023 holiday retail survey found shoppers are eager to start Christmas shopping, but they may be indulging on themselves. <laughs> Spending on non-gift items like decorations, home furnishings, and clothing is also forecast to jump 25% over last year. Consumers are expected to spend on average of more than $1,600 each on holiday-related purchases. That would be 14% more than last year. I understand that. Me you know, too. One for me, one for them. One, one for, for me. me, one for them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've got a priority straight, right? Yeah. 544, 51 degrees. And stay with us. The Animal Defense League is next with a precious pet that you're going to want to meet. Well, somewhere buried in the little blankie, <laughs> look at, oh my gosh, the most beautiful green eyes. And if she gets close enough to the microphone, boy, that motor. I don't know if you can hear it. It's just can going 90 to oh nothing. Please, she's here from the <laughs> Animal Defense League. Who is this little baby? This is Jeanette. And she's making biscuits right now. <laughs> Early in the morning, making, making those biscuits already. <laughs> she is a two-month-old little kitty available for adoption at ADL. And she is ready. Ready to find a home. Oh, how adorable. Hi, <laughs> she's oh so cute. Oh, my God. And little kittens. I mean, they are just, like we said, adorable and cute yes. and cuddly. Just like that. You get her a ball of yarn or even a little <laughs> laser pointer, you're going to have a blast. Yeah, tons of toys, for sure, with for this babies. I know, sweet Jesus. And again, oh gosh. just green eyes, big as saucers. So yeah, what you got going adorable. on? adorable. Well, we have our uh, Subaru Loves Pets um, Halloween Wolftacular happening on Saturday, October 21st. So mm -hmm. that's coming up very, very soon. We'll have pets available for adoption. We will have um, just some great opportunities to come on out, learn more about Subaru and everything that they have to offer. Of course, Subaru Loves Pets is this month. And we'll have a prize wheel. There's going to be a pet and human costume contest. So make sure to oh, dress really? up okay. and come out and have a great time. And tons of other things happening that day as well. So come on out, visit us. Hopefully you'll find a new forever companion and get some Subi swag as well. We'll have, oh, uh, wow. of course, North Park okay. Subaru will have some swag out there for you and your pet. So it's a great opportunity to come on out and support. Leave it up to me to try and get the cat all right. <laughs> you're holding on to it. So if you She's like, doing a great job, Jen. It's awesome. <laughs> if you'd like more information about all the events coming up and the great Halloween event, uh, head on over to 11th Area in Nacogdoches. And don't forget the little baby kitty over here, Paul Jolly Center <laughs> across from the zoo, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. All right, let's get another look at traffic. Things, again, moving pretty steady. We are not inched closer to morning rush just yet, but we're getting closer to 6 a.m., so more people are waking up, and we're expected to see traffic pick up just a bit. Right now, I-10, the upper level there at Culebra, is still very quiet as we get closer to that busy hour. But let's get you to our map. We do at least have one stalled vehicle that's reported right here along 1604 eastbound, heading toward US-281. It's not causing any issues, but just make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway. And anytime you see those flashing lights, be sure to move over or slow down. 
Now, a wider view of the map does show that, again, we're pretty quiet right now, but just remember to plan ahead because we do have some overnight work taking place here along US 90. This is over on the west side of San Antonio. This work begins, actually, pardon me, it begins at 9 this morning, and it should finish around 3 this afternoon. Single westbound main lane closure will be taking place from Callahan Road to West Military Drive. So know what to expect before you head out the door. There is a lot happening. Head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There's a full list of all the closures that are in our area. Other than that, guys, uh, pretty smooth the morning. How's it going for you? Not bad. Uh, opened the door this morning just to see how chilly it was yeah. considering how cold it was yesterday morning, right? Yeah, chilly yeah. in the morning, but nice in the afternoon. Yeah, it's something to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm a little bit jealous of this gentleman here. Okay. Because Duck is just kind of relaxing <laughs> on Grandma's swing. Nice. Enjoying the beautiful fall weather. And he's kind of like, could you bring me just a simple little snack? Yeah. Right. A bowl of water, just something. Yeah, not, I'm not going to want to get up for this, so. Duck living his best life. Oh, my yeah, gosh. <laughs> I love the face. Thank Aww. you very much for that uh, KSAT Connect picture. All right, got a lot of clear skies out there right now. Gorgeous morning again. Grab a jacket again, even though we are up maybe a couple of notches compared to this time yesterday. Still averaging 10 degrees below normal. 51 out at Holotus at the airport, 48 at Port SA, 50 right now at Randolph. Canyon Lake still hovering at 61 degrees and 45 up the road in Kerrville. We're going to warm up really, really quickly again this morning because the dry air Clear skies, light wind, radiational cooling. That's why we drop down and then the dry air does heat up very easily. And that's why we're going to make it all the way up through the 50s, 60s, and then gain basically 20 degrees by noon, getting up to the low 70s at noon and then top off at 83. So we'll add on another 10 degrees and that's a normal high this time of year. So right where we should be. All right, nothing is going to be really going on that much. We do have a front moving on through here. We've got another big low, which is moving through the northern plains, northern Mississippi, Great Lakes area. This one, though, is not going to pull in any colder air. We do have a front coming through what humidity tries to rebound overnight tonight, early tomorrow morning. It's going to get kind of pushed on out of here, but this ridge is going to start to build in here, and that's what's going to be heating us up for tomorrow and then especially Friday through the weekend. We're going to be flirting with records Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Not much happens then through Sunday, although the humidity is going to start to come back in. Then that low develops well out there, and that one's digging really far south, and this is going to grab onto the moisture from the tropical system there in the Pacific, which is normal right now, and that's going to throw a bunch of that moisture in on top of us. So that's why it's Tuesday, Wednesday and, and looks like lingering into Thursday as well. This is going to be pulling in some moisture and giving us those rain chances as we go into the middle part of next week. And then the hope being that this next big uh, chunk of cold air up there is going to dig deep enough and throw another front through by late, late next week. So again, this is still looking way down the road, but that's what we have cooking as of right now because between now and then nothing as far as any rain. Great today. Tomorrow, start off with some humidity, but that front comes through drier, not cooler. 88 tomorrow, close to records Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Humidity returns, but at least some of that humidity is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. Still leaning on the, the warmer side of things up in the mid 80s, but boy, that rain sure would be nice by the middle of next week. Whole lot more after this. Stick around. Good morning. The idea behind Know My Neighborhood is a pretty simple one. It is grassroots news gathering. We're not going to talk to politicians or local elected officials about what they think is important to different areas of town. We're going to talk to the people who live there. And that's what's brought us here to the Westwood Square neighborhood in the shadow of the old Kelly Air Force Base in the Edgewood area on the city's west side. A lot of the concerns in this neighborhood are really shared across the city. Crime taxes, roads, but they also have their unique concerns. I call these the ramps to nowhere. This used to be a pedestrian bridge here on Cashavo Road until a construction truck ran into the bridge eight months ago and collapsed it. This is what the city left behind. Just two ramps making a dangerous pedestrian situation even more dangerous. Tonight in Know My Neighborhood, we take you to the history, the issues and the sights of the Westwood Square neighborhood. 
and join our team for KSAT 12 News at 6 p.m. for that. Ahead in the next hour, good morning, San Antonio. This morning, the showdown between the Astros and Rangers continues tonight up in Arlington with a World Series on the line for both Texas teams. And up next, a brawl erupts in this Texas courtroom after a murder trial. What both sides are saying now. And checking trans guys, so far so good on the roads, generally speaking. Taking a live look at 10 and medical. Uh, Stephen Cavazos is here. He is tracking things, and we'll have an update coming up in a matter of minutes. President Biden and Israeli leaders now set for a critical face-to-face -face meeting as tensions flare across the Middle East following a deadly hospital blast in Gaza. I'm ABC's Justin Finch following the latest from Washington. And here at home, let's look out there with live cam, rise and shine. It's a nice cool morning again. If you haven't stepped outside, you will see that. So go ahead and grab that jacket now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Wednesday, October 18th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed the weather so far this week. It's really been nice. And after such a long, hot summer, uh, I feel spoiled. Me too. Yes. Me too. And Mike is promising us another beautiful sunrise out there across South Texas. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, it's almost identical to yesterday as well as to Monday. We've got cool temperatures, a little bit of breeze out there. Not much at all. Clear skies, good stargazing weather. Of course, yesterday we saw the International Space Station flying over just after the uh, the show ended. And yeah, get ready. Grab your sunglasses and grab your jacket. We've got temperatures 52 out there at the airport, 41 comfort, mid and upper 40s in Port portions of the hill country right now. So yes, well below normal. We're almost 10 below normal on average around the area, but up just a couple of notches compared to yesterday. Air remains very dry. Dew points down in the 40s. They, these numbers are also up just a, a notch or two. But again, overall, perfect radiational cooling weather and we have light or no wind out there, which is why temperatures are good 10 degrees on average below normal. Ragweed is moderate mold, pigweed, fall elm. So maybe you're starting to get a little couple of sniffles out there, scratchy throat because we've got a whole grocery list of uh, allergens going on right now. And throughout the rest of the morning, like the past couple of days, we're going to heat up very quickly once that sun comes up. So we'll gain 20 degrees already by noon and get up into the low 70s and then add another 10 to that 80 three so warmer than yesterday by good five six degrees that's a normal high temperature that's the last time we see anything normal or below normal for the next few days because it is definitely going to start to heat up we've got a front moving through here cold front in name only yes it will get rid of some humidity that's going to build back in overnight but temperatures in behind it are going to be flirting with records going into the weekend yeah, details on that and a look way down the road at some rain chances it's coming up traffic authority right now. Steven, what's cooking? Hey, not a whole lot over here, Mike. Things are pretty cool on the roadways as well as we get a look around town. There's 281 at San Pedro. The morning commute off to a great start and one of our favorite shots there at 37 at the Alamo Dome where we get a beautiful shot of the Tower of the Americas. But behind me, things are also looking pretty nice. Uh, 37 at 410. Traffic is moving along without any trouble, but it is still pretty early, guys. So just give yourself plenty of time. You can enjoy that cup of coffee at home, but expect the roads to get a little bit more crowded as we get closer to morning rush. Check those vehicles. We still have this stall reported along 1604 eastbound at 281. And at this time, that does seem to be the trending issues. I'm trying to keep track with a few different stalls that just popped up, so we'll get those labeled on our map momentarily. Thankfully, we're not seeing any delays when it comes to those stalled vehicles. Just move over or slow down and make sure to take your time if you're traveling into town. Still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound with 28 minutes to the Alamo City. 33 along 87 northbound if you are heading in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, it should be about a 27 minute drive time. But we'll get one last look around town there at 35 southbound. Upper and lower levels at Maine look pretty decent. And as we take a look at one last look here, 35 at 37, again, traffic off to a decent start. But I'll keep a close eye on things and I'll have more updates for you coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you. Now to our top story. It was no dream. A car crashing into a local's family's home as they slept. No one inside the home was hurt, but their peace was shattered and their home is battered. Channel Weber is live where it all happened on the street called Baldwin Ridge, not far from I-10 and West Houseman. And we saw the video of the family being rescued, Katrina. They had to be terrified for those mm -hmm. children. 
Yeah, I spoke to the father of those children. He says the entire family is shaken up. He says they were sleeping one minute and the next they were wide awake with a car in their living room. Now that car, he says, came to rest against their stairway, trapping the family on the second floor of the house. San Antonio firefighters had to rescue them through a window. No one inside the home was hurt. Their home, though, it's a different story. There's a lot of damage there. Police say it tells them that they also saw that the car had some damage, and they say that tells them the car was stolen. The driver of the car ran away. Now, as far as we know, police still have not tracked down that person. The family, meanwhile, also had to leave this house, and they tell us they're staying with family until they can figure out their next move. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a man is recovering after being shot in the thumb on the city's east side. San Antonio police tell us the man was sitting in his car preparing to go inside when a vehicle drove up and someone inside shot at him. Now, those shots hit him and two other vehicles nearby. The man was treated at the scene and is expected to be OK. Right now, there is no information on the shooter. Right now, we're taking a live look at Tel Aviv, Israel, and it is now 2.05 in the afternoon there. As we track the latest in the Israel-Hamas war, President Biden set for high-stakes meetings with Israel's prime minister today. The visit comes after the Gaza Health Ministry reported at least 500 Palestinian civilians were killed when a rocket hit a hospital. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, Israel and Hamas are blaming each other for that explosion. Tensions intensifying this morning across the Middle East. From the West Bank to Jordan to Iran, angry protests prompted by reports of a deadly missile strike at a Gaza City hospital killing hundreds. Many of the dead were injured Palestinian civilians, others seeking shelter from the fighting. Videos circulating online showing that hospital reduced to a burning shell. Hamas militants blaming the blast on an Israeli missile, Israel insisting they are not at fault. The explosion happening just as President Biden was heading to the Middle East. Biden saying in a statement, I am outraged and deeply saddened by the explosion at the Al-Ali Arab Hospital in Gaza and the terrible loss of life that resulted. The president saying the U.S. supports the protection of civilian life during conflict and that he's directing his team to investigate. A U.S. official tells ABC News it is uncertain who launched the strike and it will take a while to determine. ABC News has learned the Biden administration is drafting a $100 billion foreign aid package that includes security assistance for Israel. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In your other morning headlines, U.S. Congressman Jim Jordan is hoping the second time is the charm. The Republican from Ohio seeking more support in his quest to be the next Speaker of the House. His first bid fell short yesterday after 20 Republicans voted against him. Republican Kevin McCarthy was voted out as House Speaker earlier this month. Until a successor is named, the House cannot consider legislation. And the threat of another potential government shutdown is only about a month away. The idea that the Republicans... <laughs> kind of hit rock bottom, bottom and uh, nominating Jim Jordan for speaker. I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, Halloween's coming early. Now, Jordan can only lose four Republican votes if all Democrats are present. A courtroom brawl was caught on camera in Houston after a man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend accepted a plea deal. And just take a look at this video. 19-year-old Frank DeLeon Jr. shot 16-year-old Diamond Alvarez at a park near her home last year. Well, inside the courtroom yesterday, moments after giving a statement, the victim's mother walked towards DeLeon Jr., which sparked a fight between her family and his. Now, after court, the victim's mother apologized for losing control. That was wrong of me. That was wrong of us because we're not monsters. But it's so much hate, because I want my daughter back. And what he did is, wasn't, it was horrible. Now, DeLeon will have to serve at least half of his sentence before he is eligible for parole. For now, he remains at the Harris County Jail until his formal sentencing on Thursday. Hey, inside that same Houston courthouse, a massive search was underway for 32-year-old Michael Combs, who somehow managed to escape his restraints and walk right out of the Harris County Courthouse without anyone noticing. This was around the same time the family fight broke out on the same floor. 
Combs was out on bond after he was charged with assaulting his ex-girlfriend and the mother of his two children. Combs has since talked to his mother, saying he doesn't want to go back to jail. And the time now is 6.09 and 51 degrees for now. Still to come on GMSA, former Spurs coach Becky Hammond, one win away from a second straight WNBA title. We've got a preview of tonight's Game 4 action in New York. And coming up after the break, we are one week away from opening night for the Spurs. What fans can expect in their preseason matchup tonight against the Houston Rockets. Back outside with live cam. Yeah, right around 51 degrees. So definitely light jacket weather for the kiddos this morning as they head off to school. And for you, as you head to work, you're watching GMSA. We'll be right back.